Hey everybody, it's time for the final visualization of the semester. I just want to give a big thank you for all the positivity and all the support and all the great work everyone's doing. With that said, we still have a Kahoot coming up later, so make sure to check that out and check out the review videos. I've got review playlists in the description right here, so check out the description, click on them, and watch some of the reviews to get ready for the final. But without further ado, let's just jump into visualization number 10. So this visualization has two parts to it. We're going to make a confidence interval, and then also we're gonna do a hypothesis test. When we make the confidence interval, we can actually use it to do the hypothesis test, but we can also use the p-value in the hypothesis test to do the hypothesis test. So step one is going to be to get our data and make a confidence interval. And you can see all the steps right here. We're gonna take a random sample. Do not forget to take a random sample. You won't see me taking a random sample, but please take your random sample. I'll show you where to click. Make sure you do that and take your random sample. Then we're going to make our confidence interval and interpret our confidence interval. Also include the output right here. Next, we're gonna go through and do a hypothesis test to see if there is no difference between runners times. And we will then go through and use the corresponding alpha level to the confidence interval up here. This is a 90% confidence interval. And the corresponding alpha level will always be one minus the confidence level for the alpha level. And if we use the confidence interval, last but not least, we're gonna write out our conclusion regarding the null and the alternative. So let's just jump into this. So here's the data I'll be using for the assignment. Make sure to use your data as outlined in the assignment. I'm gonna go here to tables and then subset and subset 50 observations, which will give me 50 random rows. So let's go ahead and click okay. And now we have our subset of 50 rows. Next, we need to know what a two sample t-test is going to do and what a two sample t-interval is gonna do. Well, the two and two sample means that we have a two level categorical X variable like Greek life, yes or no. And we're doing a t-test because we're gonna compare the mean, which is gonna be a quantitative Y variable. So we need a quantitative Y, like how much will people spend on Black Friday? And we need a two level categorical X, like are people in Greek life, yes or no? And we're basically gonna compare the means of these groups. We're gonna compare the mean for how much people in Greek life plan to spend on Black Friday versus the mean of how much people not in Greek life plan to spend on Black Friday. Let's go here to analyze fit Y by X. And we're gonna go ahead and take Black Friday, which is the quantitative Y variable, and put it there, and Greek life, which is the categorical X variable, and it goes right there. When we click OK, we can get a side-by-side -side box plot nice and easily by clicking the red arrow and going to quantiles. We now have a side-by-side -side box plot with the quantiles showing us the five number summary, along with some extra quantiles in here, the 10th percentile and the 90th percentile. To get our interval right here, the confidence interval, we just need to go to t-test. It'll actually do the confidence interval for us. So let's go ahead and get the interval right here. You'll notice right here we have a 95% interval, but we can change that. Let's go down here and go to set alpha level and put it to 10%. You notice we have now changed the confidence interval and it's gotten smaller. The interval actually got smaller because it went from 95 to a 90% confidence interval. Now this interval is interesting because it contains zero, which means there might be no difference between the two groups. You'll notice right here that yes is the first group and no is the second group. Because the interval is mostly positive, that means that yes is probably higher, but it could be that no is higher. It could be that there's no difference. In what we have right here, we do not have a statistically significant difference because zero is included inside the interval. Now, when you think about this, what does this interval mean when we interpret it? I am 90% confident that the true difference between what people plan to spend on average for Black Friday if they are in Greek life or not in Greek life is contained in the interval negative $10.625 to $58.68 where people in Greek life might be spending more. But be very careful right here. It could be that people not in Greek life are spending $10.62.5 more because the negative portion of the interval corresponds with no being higher than yes. And that's why this difference right here is not statistically significant. This is a little bit more complicated of an interpretation. It's a much easier interpretation when zero is not included in the interval. And let's look at an example with that. So using the full data set right here, we'll actually get a smaller interval. And with this interval right here, let's go to analyze fit Y by X and do the same thing where we have Black Friday and we use Greek life to explain it. And we're just gonna go right back here and make a 95% confidence roll 
We can make the 90% if we want by going to the set alpha level and putting it to 10. And then we write here, have a 90% confidence interval. Now, if you'll notice, this interval is completely positive this time, meaning that we are 90% confident that the true difference between what people in Greek life plan to spend on Black Friday versus people not in Greek life plan to spend on Black Friday is contained in the interval $18.54 to $41.91, where people who are in Greek life plan to spend more. This is because the interval is positive, yes minus no. If the interval was negative, like in this example, analyze fit y by x. We'll put gender here and Black Friday here, and now we see an interval that is negative because in this interval, the second group has the higher sample mean, and we believe that the true mean for the second group might be the higher one. Make sure to note when the difference is negative, it's the second mean that looks to be higher, or at least when it comes to the sample mean. When you look at your interval, this means that the true mean for the second group looks to be higher than the true mean for the first group. So in review, make sure to know how to interpret this. I am blank percent confident that the true, and make sure you explain what you're talking about right here, is contained in the interval blank to blank, where, and then give context. If zero is included in the interval, there might not be a difference between the groups. Remember, if the interval is positive, it means that the first mean is higher. If the interval is negative, it means that we have confidence that the second mean is higher. So make sure to give a clear interpretation right here. It's probably one of the hardest ones to interpret, but you got it. No worries right there. So here we have how to interpret our p-value when doing the test. The p-value right here is basically zero. It's 0 0.0001. So we'd say because my p-value of 0 0.0001 is less than the alpha, and let's take a look, we used a 95% confidence interval. So the corresponding alpha level for this one would be 0 0.05. So is less than the alpha of 0 0.05. I reject the null hypothesis and have evidence for the alternative that the true mean amount that males and females plan to spend on Black Friday is different. We are using this alternative right here, which corresponds to the difference. And we are saying that the null is that there's no difference between ma what males and females spend on Black Friday. And the alternative is there is a difference between what males and females plan to spend on Black Friday. And that is the alternative we have evidence for that there is a difference between these two groups. Now, what if the p-value is high? Remember, when the p-value is low, reject the null. When the p-value is high, just let it fly. Don't reject the null. So let's go down here to the next example I have. And you notice there's a little bit, you don't have to change the colors of your words, but I tried to highlight what's changed about this. So because my p-value of 0.2458 is greater than my alpha, and here I'm using a 90% confidence roll, so the corresponding alpha level would be 0 0.10. So it's because my p-value of 0.2458 is greater than alpha of 0 0.10, the complement of this, I fail to reject the null hypothesis and do not have evidence for the alternative that there is a true difference between what people in Greek life and people not in Greek life plan to spend on Black Friday. I do not have evidence of a difference between these two means. So the last part right here is us just stating what the alternative is. And let's make this very clear what we're testing right here. When we are testing this alternative, we need to know that the null for the two sample test is going to be that mean one minus mean two has no difference. For our examples right here, we have the alternative that mean one minus mean two has a difference that they are not equal to. And as we like to stress, the only thing we change right here when writing the alternative is just the sign. This is the only thing we change and the null always has the equal sign. So practice writing these and good luck with the visualization assignment.